there's a lot of fallout and a lot of reporting that is starting to happen as to how uh, this all came about with the sequencing of the chips bill. And then all of a sudden, Manchin and Schumer, and I know that um, Emma talked about uh, this deal yesterday, um, and uh, we'll talk more about it with Alex Perrine, the specifics of it. But um, there's more reporting coming out. Manchin is um, pretending that this was just a sort of a uh, coincidence. There was no uh, secret plan here. And now the Republicans are trying to plan, uh, uh, pretend that they're not actually mad about it. Here is uh, John Cornyn um, out in uh, Capitol Hill on uh, yesterday um, explaining why they essentially stopped the veterans health care bill. Now, remember, they had voted on this weeks ago in favor of it. There had to be a technical fix that it was brought back to the Senate floor to fix it. This is fairly common. And yet they voted it down this time because they were being so pissy <laughs> about this uh, reconciliation bill. Uh, here is John Cornyn now claiming that it was, well, there was a, an amendment. What happened in uh, June is that um, the uh, leadership of the, um, of the Democratic Party double-crossed. Um, Senator Tester, Senator Moran made an agreement um, that there would be two amendments. Senator Schumer agreed to the same thing, and then they reneged on that. Uh, this bill will ultimately pass, but it will be more fiscally responsible. Senator Toomey, who led that effort, is uh, negotiating uh, with the leadership uh, for things that should have been done last June, but which were reneged upon. So um, uh, it will pass. Um, I mean, they're taking a big, big hit on this uh, politically, which is good. And... Um, What's interesting is they also understand that they're not going to um, um, they're not going to whine about it because it makes them look even worse when they whine that they get played. The Democrats could take a good lesson from this. Mm -hmm. There is no political value in complaining that our opponents um, outsmarted us. That doesn't that doesn't help you uh, mm -hmm. with anybody. There's no referee. You know, the manager's not going to show up and say, you got to do this again. The teacher's not going to come in and say, well, hey, guys, uh, let's let's redo that last inning. That That's wasn't not fair. Happen. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, no, I mean, they're taking a page out of a certain other Democrats book, which is to hide behind Senate procedure and hope it's so convoluted that people don't really know what you're actually doing. Um, but the reality is that they were just vindictive. They were pissed that Manchin and Schumer actually, in a rare moment of effective maneuvering, hid that they had come to this agreement so they could preserve the reconciliation option for uh, the Inflation Reduction Act or whatever branding got Manchin on board with it. The uh, bill that's the shadow of Build Back Better, that's one ninth of what was initially proposed. But that was a, a smart strategy. And for maybe the first time in years, McConnell was outmaneuvered a bit. Um, although you could argue that he was as well with the uh, second COVID relief package. But um, they're, they're, they're pissed about this and so they're using veterans with <laughs> health issues as a, a punching bag or as a way to to stick their thumb in the face of the Democrats. And they're also saying, Susan Collins, even that they're probably going to do it with the gay marriage bill as well. So, um, as you say, lesson to the Democrats. These are the kind of people you're dealing with and treat them with the appropriate aggressiveness to beat them back. And we now have Susan Collins coming out saying that um, this this uh, this maneuver is now going to threaten the marriage equality bill because yeah. um, I think because Susan Collins is a liar. I want to say pathological, but that's not true. She lies with real intent. And uh, so it is. Um, and, you know. They might be using this as a way of avoiding 
having to vote on this marriage equality bill, which they are very nervous about voting for. And people have to keep a good eye on this now because um, what's happening in the Senate, and we'll talk about this with Perrine maybe a little bit as well. What's happening in the Senate is fascinating um, in terms of where, where Democratic Senate challengers are. In Pennsylvania, it, it, it looks like Oz is just like dropping like a lead balloon. Hmm. Uh, Fetterman is running a great campaign. And, and, and surely it's not helping that uh, Mastriano, who was running for governor, um, is out there. And granted, there's still uh, plenty of time in that race. But he's out there having to reiterate that he's not a Nazi. And um, that's not where you want to be in the general election. You don't want to have to be out there trying to convince people that despite the fact that you're hanging out with a bunch of uh, anti-Semites and fascists, that you're not one of them. It's got to be just one of those sort of like, who knew what would happen? Uh, I, I went to this uh, event and he was there. And it's sort of like that uh, Gilbert Gottfried um, joke about Kurt Waldheim. Gottfried passed away recently. Uh, he had a great joke. Kurt Waldheim was the former UN Secretary General, and it came out at one point that he, um, I can't remember the exact charge, so I, I want to be uh, circumspect here, but that he had some uh, affiliations to the actual Nazis. Ah. And uh, Gilbert Gottfried had a funny joke uh, where he was, and I'm not going to do the Gilbert Gottfried joke, but uh, voice. <laughs> but where he was out um, on a vacation to uh, Berlin with, with his wife. And he told his wife, take a picture of me right over here. And just as she was about to click the picture, uh, Hitler walked by <laughs> and Waldheim said, stop, don't take the picture. Stop, don't take the picture. Um, th there's that quality for uh, Mastriano. Uh, there. Um, all right. Before we uh, take a break uh, for a sponsor and get to uh, Alex Perrine, uh, just a couple updates on a couple of things. Uh, uh, Wednesday, we had uh, protesters on who are going to disrupt the uh, congressional baseball game on Thursday. Three folks got arrested. Didn't necessarily make the big news splash that uh, I think they were hoping uh, because I think largely overshadowed by this big congressional deal. But uh, three folks got arrested there. And uh, at the very least, there was, um, you know, uh, posters and whatnot. I mean, it's going to take a lot of, of, of pressure. Um, also, uh, just an update on what happened with Hadley, Massachusetts. Trader Joe gets a union as um, um, the Hadley, Mass workers vote to approve and if you can go back and listen to our um, interview with those folks on June 15th, uh, it's a big deal and uh, it, it's good news. Go back June 15th and check out that thing.